Welcome back to my channel. It is Friday. It is also College Sweatshirt Day, so shout out to any Cabrini University alums. I hope you had a great week with your students. My students were very busy this week with our extension topics for our unit on chemical reactions. As I mentioned a couple of weeks ago, I was sick with the flu, and what I decided to do in order to get a, an extra um, marking period grade for the second marking period, I decided to split the unit into two major topics. So the first focus on like introductory stuff, important stuff that the kids need to know how to do for the entire unit on reactions. So for example, I talked about how to convert word equations into formula equations, balancing equations, classification of reactions, um, and predicting products. I did also include some particulate models as I showed you in my last video on um, phenomenaling and making water. And now we are in the second half of our unit where my students are engaging in learning about net ionic equations and redox reactions. These two topics also include a lot of particulate models and it occurred to me one of the things that I really don't talk about so much on my channel is how I incorporate simulations into my chemistry class. I thought one thing that would be great to talk about with you this week is my top five websites that I go to um, find some great chemistry simulations and then just talk a little bit about how I scaffold for the sims so the kids just aren't clicking mindlessly through the simulations. I thought it would be a little easier to talk about all the sims that I like to use in my chemistry class by doing a voiceover so you could actually see what I'm talking about. Um, so obviously I'm going to link all of these different sims down below, but this is the first one. So this is called Sim Bucket. I use Sim Bucket for my unit menus on ionic bonding and covalent bonding. Um, this is the covalent bonding tutorial, and what I like so much about this one is it focuses on what is occurring um, to form that covalent bond, as well as the energetics involved. Um, the students really have a great understanding of the attractions and repulsions involved, especially when we're talking about bond length. This is really, really important. As we go through to the next sim, this is um, CK12. So CK12 has some amazing sims, especially if you're following the NGSS. What I like so much about CK12 is, is besides the fact that you can actually assign it to your class and create classes and um, assign these different activities to them, it also does a really nice job of relating out of the classroom experiences to what's going on on the particulate level. And so my students have had a lot of success learning about outside of the classroom experiences and how it relates to chemistry. After that, I think everybody's really familiar with FET. So um, FET is obviously a great resource, not only because it has the HTML5 sims, but it also has a ton of them. But what's best about FET, which a lot of people may not know, is that if you go to the For Teachers section, there are so many just grab and go resources that you can just download and print and give right to your students. And they're just essentially scaffolded worksheets that help your students go through the simulations. And they're fantastic. Next up is a website called ChemDemos. This is by the University of Oregon. Um, specifically, what I like so much about this is you can type in whatever you're looking for and then um, it'll pull up a whole bunch of stuff. So not only does it pull up sims, it also pulls up demonstrations. So that's really nice. The sim that I thought I would focus on is the one that I used in my unit menu. So this was a required activity. This sim is made by Thomas Greenbow. He has some outstanding resources, especially if you teach AP Chemistry, you should check it out. I like that the students are able to change the size of the sim so they can really um, zoom in and out very easily. And then of course, the sim does a great job of linking the macroscopic scale and the microscopic scale. So macroscopically, we see that the silver precipitated, and then the kids just by a click of a button can go to the molecular scale. And what I love so much about this sim is that it really focuses on the movement of electrons. And then it shows all the different ways that this reaction can be shown. So it includes the reaction that um, has the spectator ions, it includes the net ionic equation, and then it moves into half reactions. So it does a really nice job of showing all the different ways that this reaction can be demonstrated. The last set of sims um, is called Molecular Workbench. It is by Concord Consortium. I don't use this set of sims so much for my unit on chemical reactions, um, but I do use it quite a bit for intermolecular forces. 
I like it because the kids can really interact with the sim and um, see the differences in the attractive forces and ultimately how these attractive forces lead to what we see on the macroscopic scale. So for example, why oil and water don't mix. Whenever possible, I do try to incorporate some sort of scaffolded worksheet that goes along with the simulations because as I mentioned, I don't want the kids just mindlessly clicking through the sim. I want to make sure that they have some notes or something meaningful to refer back to because I do hold my students accountable for the modeling aspect of the sims. So usually when I have a little bit of more time on my hands, I try to create some sort of scaffolded worksheet. So here's an example of one and this is the actual worksheet that I gave my students um, I guess it was a couple of days ago when we were working on the menu. And this one specifically was for modeling redox reactions. Um, that was actually the sim that I showed you uh, previously. Um, and so what I did was have the students get some instructions as far as like what they should be clicking on. I focused on the macroscopic and then I focused on the microscopic. And then you can see down below, I included two beakers. One beaker was for a reaction that did occur, a redox reaction that did occur. And then the second beaker was for a redox reaction that did not occur. And I did prompt the students to say, illustrate a model that, um, demonstrates what occurs on the particulate level. Um, so you have to incorporate both the observable and the unobservable. And then I encourage my students to focus, since it is a redox reaction, on the movement of electrons. So I hope this video helped you to understand the five major sites that I go to whenever I'm looking to incorporate simulations into my chemistry class. And of course, how I scaffold for my students to make sure that they're getting out of the sim what they really need to get out of it. If you have any other sites that you use that you find are really helpful for teaching your chemistry class, I'd love to know, and I'm sure anybody that's following this channel would love to know too, so please feel free to post a comment down below as, or a link to the sites that you're using, and um, either way, I hope you had a great weekend, and I will be sure to check in with you next week.